Hey guys, back in the shop with the Willys Go Devil L134 motor. Um, the last video we installed the cam bearing, and in this video we're going to install the camshaft. And we're also going to talk about a old process to kind of, uh, you know, get the camshaft the appropriate fit on some of these engines. A lot of times when you install camshafts, you find that they're a little bit bound up, and you'll you'll see tons of information on the internet about bent camshafts and misaligned uh, cam journal um, journals on the block and all that stuff. And I'm sure there's a, a, a grain of truth to some of that. But at the end of the day, you know, this is a problem that has plagued uh, machinists and, and mechanics for a long time. It's nothing new. And uh, there's ways to, uh, to solve those problems, and I'm going to get into some of those. But first, let's talk about getting the cam installed. On this motor in particular, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have your tappets installed. The tappets are what ride on the cam. This is the follower. And uh, these are ultimately going to lift your valves up and down against the pressure of the springs. Now ordinarily, you would want to make sure that you put the tappets back in the um, bore that they came out of. But unfortunately, we got this engine in pieces, so we never knew which one they went into. I've looked all over for any type of designation that a previous uh, mechanic would have put on here and I cannot find it anywhere so we're gonna have to put these back in uh, just wherever it, it's it's one of those things it's not the preferred way to do it but it'll be fine so you know real quick we drop our tappets in and I will say that these tappets did not go in very smoothly at first I had to take a ball cone right here and run it down into each one of these bores and then after that they still didn't go in and I, had, I just had to kind of oil them and work them in and out. And at the end of the day, you want to make sure that these have a little bit of lubrication on them. These already do because I've, I've lubed these and the bores up um, that they ride in, so, so we're good on that. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that these are moving up and down without any type of binding. So you want to make sure when you lift them up, you hear that nice good thud when they hit the block. And as you can see with these, they do. So those are in, and it's important to put these in first because once the camshaft's in, you cannot get these in. So we, we get the, uh, the tappets installed, and then we go to our camshaft. And I like to have the camshaft gear already installed, and um, of course we've got the uh, thrust plate that retains the cam in the block. Um, and then, you know, as with any engine, just want to be careful that we don't nick the camshaft bearing that we just installed. But what we're going to do is we're going to put this camshaft in here, and I've already put a little bit of light oil, not assembly lube, just some light oil on these. And we are going to walk this in and be very careful not to, you know, clank this thing around. You don't have to be like a surgeon. It's not like that particular, but you just want to make sure you're not dinging the main bearing on the front with a cam lobe because those cam lobes can be kind of sharp on the ends. And there's two things we want to check. One, we want to make sure that this goes in all the way very easily. And this this kind of does. It goes in pretty easily, but you know if you can if you can put the camera right here um, and I'll try to get something in there to point to what we're trying to show. But if you can see right in here, this is the um, and it's not zooming on us very well. So let me see if I can, there we go. This is the retainer plate here. And if you can see in here good enough, um, you know, this is gonna mount up to the block, but we have this little space right here but behind it where there's a little bit of that cam journal, that number one journal sticking out. And you can go ahead and back up now, Nina. Um, you know, I would prefer this cam to, to slide in a little bit easier. I have to kind of force, not much, I, I say force, that's really not the right word, but it, I just have to kind of knock it in that last bit. And then also when I spin it, if you come back out here and into the front of the engine, when I spin this, it's de it's definitely not bound up, but it, it could be a little smoother. It's uh, it's just a little, see how it's, it's just kind of, I can't freewheel it any. Um, I'm not saying you necessarily want it to freewheel, but you should definitely be able to spin it with one hand, and you should definitely be able to spin it, you know, by these uh, these two holes here pretty easily. And this is close. This is very close, but it's not perfect. It's just a little bit tighter than I want it. And a couple of things cause that. Well, if you talk to internet forums, you'll you'll hear a litany of things that cause that. Um, but in my experience, 
it's usually the um, the bores in the engine block probably had much smaller or much higher tolerances from the factory. They probably quite frankly ran quite a bit more cam bearing clearance. And so what happens with a newer modern cam bearing, which we put in, um, is you you drive it in there and it crushes down a little bit and it and it just gets a little tight. And that's okay because um, they the, the trick to fixing that is to put a cam in there and spin it. And then when you get done spinning it, you can come in here and you can see and I don't know how well this will show up. This is pretty shiny. Let me let me grab this real quick. You can see there's a shiny spot right here. That's a high spot. That's a spot where that um, camshaft has, you know, touched off on this. And, and these babbits are very soft. So it, it just rubbed a shiny spot in there. And what I've done is I've gone to Goodson Tools. And I got a cam, uh, a cam bearing, a babbit bearing knife. And I'm just going to go in there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take this and very easily shave those off. It doesn't take much. And some guys even do this with a razor blade. I use this because it's longer. But I'm just I'm just kind of taking off a little bit of that. And you'll see a little bit of material will actually come off. Not much, just a little bit. And guys, this isn't witchcraft. Like this isn't you don't have to be like a uh, you know some type of art artist with cam bearings this is stuff that's been done for a long time you don't see a lot of people doing this and, and if you talk to machinists they're going to tell you no you need to line bore the the cam journals and and something's wrong you redo it this is a perfectly acceptable way to get your cam spinning better when you've got a tight cam and if if you don't believe me talk to any of the old farmers with the old tractors that had you know um l head engines on them this is a pretty common thing to do uh the the, the bad part is that a lot of those guys aren't around anymore and you're left with just the expensive solution which is going to the machine shop and having them cut on these things and it's not necessary this is a this is a perfectly fine um, way to do this and if you don't believe me I want you to take note of the fact that this engine doesn't even have cam bearings in the number two three and four spots it just rides in the uh, block itself so you know the criticality of these cam bearings has been I think a little bit overstated now maybe if this was a thousand horsepower motor that was going to see 8,000 rpm maybe you wouldn't want to do this i don't know i'd probably still do it but this is a perfectly acceptable method to get your camshaft spinning good in a cam bearing journal that's a little tight and i think you know what makes them tight is like i said when these newer bearings with the with with a little bit better manufacturing tolerances get crushed down in these old blocks you lose you know you get pretty tight on the clearance and then the other thing is, I don't think very many of these older blocks got machined very straight. So the bearing always kind of goes in cockeyed. And, and I've, I've had times where I've driven them in, they've been tight. I've driven them out and drove it back in again, trying to be more careful. And it loosened up on me, meaning that it, it, it went in the second time straighter. I tried that two or three times on this and I couldn't get it any straighter. So my next and final method is, is the cam bearing knife and shaving off those high spots. So I'm going to get under here real quick and make sure there's not a high spot on top. I don't think there is. Now it looks pretty good up there. Um, I think most of it um, is right here where we where we see it. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna give it a little bit more. And I think that's probably gonna do it. Now I will say this: you do want to wipe them down pretty good. There's nothing coming off of that bearing material that's gonna you know be abrasive or anything like that. These are very soft. I've, I don't know exactly what these are made out of, but it's a it's a soft material, probably a tin or something. And uh, get that cleaned out pretty good, and I'll put a little bit of light oil on there. Um, a lot of guys put uh, assembly lube on the cam bearing journals, and I may do that for final assembly. But right now, when we're just trying to kind of get the fit, we just want to make sure that we got something in there, right? We don't want to dry one on there. So a little bit of oil on there. Not too much. And we will go ahead and slide this back in. And again, we'll be very careful not to ding the bearing. If you have to stop to rest, stop on one of the journals because they're round and soft, softer edge. And we just kind of go in, get past the gear, and there's another journal so I can kind of sit that in there and take a rest while I come to the other end and support it. 
And really we're just trying to keep those cam journals and the sharp edges from them from nicking the barrel, the uh, cam bearing. And we're getting right to the end, so there we go. We're halfway in our journals. Now I'm going to push this in and see if we're spinning a little better. And we are. It's 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 that's the right. We're going the right direction. We're starting to get a little bit better. You know, this is starting to move a little bit more free. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this out and, and probably shave a little bit more off to try to get this better. Um, but I don't think we necessarily need to need to film that. And you know, how much time are we on this video? Ten, 10 minutes and forty three seconds. So we're at a little over ten minutes, which is which is good for this video. But that's uh, just wanted to show you guys. You know, get your tappets in first. Uh, make sure your bores for your tappets are all cleaned up. Put your cam in. If your cam's a little tight, don't be afraid to, to take the uh, the cam bearing knife out and and shave the shiny high spots off after you after you spin the cam in there. It's a perfectly acceptable uh, way to, to get these things back together and, and spinning right. That's it for today, guys. Uh, next video, we will probably be assembling the rest of the valve train. So we'll be putting the springs and the retainers and the keepers on the valves, uh, as well as the valves. And we will pretty much have the engine valve train assembled. And then we'll drop the crankshaft in and do the rear main seal for you. And then after that, it's just going to be kind of a reassembly of the uh, you know exterior parts of the, of the engine. That's it guys, appreciate it, thank you so much.